Okay, well, first things first, my hair is doing whatever it wants today. I'm just letting it ride, okay? Second of all, we've got a lot of new makeup to try today. I'm gonna be honest, I thought, is it too soon to try new makeup? Because it was only a few weeks ago that I just did one of these, but <laughs> there's so many new launches I'm dying to try, and I love trying them on camera versus trying them on my own and then like talking about it later. I like trying them on camera when I can. So that's what we're doing. I'm so excited. It's some drugstore, some more like Sephora level brands. Let's dive in. I have an eyelash in my eye though, hold on. All right, so today we're drinking Half Calf. Oh yeah. So first things first, this is, I'm just throwing, oh no, 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 whoa, Jessica, slow down. I was gonna put on my moisturizer. All right, we are gonna try the product that has me so curious and so many of you guys curious. So this is the Murad Targeted Wrinkle Corrector. So the idea of this, and if you read the reviews, people are like, uh, it works, but it only works for an amount of time. So you put this on any wrinkles. Now I don't have like big wrinkles yet. I do have some like crow's feet and stuff. So I'm kind of curious to just see what this does. So you put like a small line. Well, first of all, look at this applicator. So how does this come out? Okay, so you put a small line of this on any like wrinkles or whatever. Okay, this is probably too much and it says to kind of blend it in with, maybe we'll do like my little like crow's feet area. And apparently, and then you just kind of tap in the excess. Supposedly it really will like make your wrinkles look so much less obvious for like, I don't know if it's like the day or how long? Let me look this up again. I feel like I'm just like speaking from my butt <laughs> and I don't actually know for sure. So let me, Murad Targeted Wrinkle Corrector. When I tell you that Google just typed in Mira Targeted Wrinkle comma correct or <laughs> none of that was right. Okay, woof, this is pricey. So I bought this during the Ulta sale half off. So just saying like the full price is $80. I got it for 40, which is still really expensive. I feel like it is less obvious in that area though, whoa. So it visibly smooths and reduces wrinkle intensity. That's the idea. So you can use it on fine lines as well because that's basically what I'm dealing with. It does look a little less obvious, but now I'm like, is it just in my head? So let's put a little bit over here so you can kind of see my fine lines. Did I get any out? I don't think I did. Put a little up there too. I don't know how close I wanna get it to the eye, which is why like I have tons of fine lines right there, but I'm like, well, I'll kind of look into it. And we'll just tap in the excess. I definitely feel like it's not as obvious. Are you guys seeing this or am I crazy? So I wanna see like, am I allowed to put it this close to my eye? Like if I wanted to try these fine lines there. So it's got squalane that helps prevent moisture loss to help skin resist future wrinkles, it says. Um, acetyl hexapeptide eight boosts elasticity to help uh, future wrinkles form, to help prevent them from forming. <laughs> so, basically says it's like a filler in a cream. It says it floods wrinkles, even deep set stubborn lines with hydration to visibly plump, smooth, and reduce wrinkle intensity on contact. Instant results are not permanent. So that was the part that stuck in my mind. Like this is interesting, but now it does say after four weeks of application, 88% agree that facial expression lines look smoother. So, I mean, you know, I'm curious enough. So I'm gonna kinda try some right, I'm not gonna go like touching the eye, but just like right underneath, maybe I'll use, this feels so good, the applicator's so so cold. And then we're gonna try it up on my forehead where I just naturally have like some wrinkles starting, you know? I feel so good. So the one thing I am definitely noticing is where I put some higher up under my eye, it looks, less, you can still see some of my fine lines, but it definitely looks a little bit smoother than this side does where I didn't put it there. So like when it comes to the instant results, I'm definitely seeing some of that, you know? But I'm curious, have any of you guys tried this? Do you feel, especially like long-term, does it matter? It's cool that you can get some instant results and it feel, you know what I mean? Like you're, it just makes your skin look nice and a little more youthful, but I don't know. It's pretty pricey to have to keep buying. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on here. So it definitely says to let this fully dry before you go in with moisturizer SPF, because I'm assuming if you don't, it would kind of move it around a bit. I mean, it's probably not that big of a deal, but if you're wanting the results to last a little bit, I'm sure, you know. So, I mean, this is pretty cool. I feel like they're less obvious. You tell me, and I know while I'm watching this back, 
I'll be able to tell because it's really hard in the moment when I'm looking at this, but I feel like all of those little bits are just a little bit less obvious, but it's really hard to know if I'm just in my head. So let me know your thoughts. And if you've used it, let me know because I think the comment section is gonna be a treasure trove for anyone that's curious about this product. Um, especially, you know, I'm 34. If you're 38 using it, if you're 25 using it, 48, 72, like where are you in the age uh, range and how does it work for you? Because obviously as you get older, our skin ages more. So if it's even more obvious on deeper wrinkles, that's kind of cool that it really works. So anyway, let me know. That was like 10 minutes on this, but this is like the one product that I've heard actually works and I've been so curious about. So there you go. I will certainly update you on this product in the future. No worries there. All right, so the foundation we're gonna try. Um, well, let me throw on moisturizer now that that's dried. Um, I'm just using my Bliss Barrier Aid moisturizer. I really have been enjoying this. I like that the packaging is like the metal tubing and I never know why I like that, but I always, I just dig that, I don't know. <laughs> but this has been great. I've been working on kind of fixing my um, barrier, my skin barrier. And I definitely feel like this has been really nice. It's moisturizing. It, I don't know, it just feels good on the skin. My skin's been dealing with it. It's been tolerating it really nicely because it is more sensitive, but really effective. It just doesn't have a bunch of gunk in it from what I understand. So there we go. So the foundation we're gonna use is the new one from Say. So this is their Glowy Super Skin Foundation. I got the shade seven. I have liked a lot of products from Say. And so when I saw they were launching this foundation, I was pretty excited, added it to cart immediately. <laughs> I had to kind of guess on my shade online. I think it's okay. It's not going to be perfect, but I think it's going to be not terrible. I think it's just a little bit darker and a little more like, I don't want to say orange, but what's the term I'm trying to think of for that? Anyway, we're going to try it. It feels thinner, like more of a serum type foundation. Let me show you the texture of it. Yeah, you can kind of see there and you see what I mean. It's a little pe maybe peachier than my skin but we're gonna make it work today. Ooh, letting that moisturizer sink in just a little bit more. What is the weather like where you guys live right now? Are you in spring mode? Do you live in the Southern hemisphere? Are you entering fall mode? I am so intrigued by that and how it's flipped. That always, like I remember learning as a kid that the hemispheres experience seasons the opposite in general. I mean, it's not all, but you know, and that blew my mind. And honestly, still in my thirties, it still blows my mind a little bit. <laughs> So this says it is lightweight and also, okay, it's their Hydro Bounce Serum Foundation. It definitely says shake it to activate the formula. I have definitely noticed, even in the few days I've had this without even ever using it, that the product inside does separate. So definitely every time you pick it up to use it, even if you use it every day, give it a good shake. Yeah, it says due to the number of skincare ingredients in this, separation is normal. So it says to use a brush or your fingers. We'll use my fingers maybe first just to see how it blends out but i kind of still want to use a sponge just because i like sponges but i can get down with using my fingers let's just give her a whirl on this side definitely i'm feeling like a little bit of this is just kind of spreading which is cool this was like half a pump and i definitely feel like it's spreading really nicely and there's definitely something to be said about the heat of your hands and how nice that can make certain products look. I feel like other ones can look weird, but you know, it just kind of depends. All right, so we're gonna ignore my poor little chin. Well, not ignore it, but it, I have dry skin I'm still dealing with. And so this is, I mean, just, you can just see it. So I guess the really important message here is if you do have dry skin, this isn't necessarily gonna hide it, but it is a hydrating product, but I mean, you can just see it. It's just dry skin. It's looking really nice on my cheeks though. Not wildly high coverage, but still some coverage. So when you look at this cheek with it on versus this cheek without it, you can definitely see a lot more of just like the redness and stuff over here versus not. It looks really, it looks really nice. I almost put on a glowy uh, like foundation, not foundation, glowy primer. And I'm glad that I didn't because I feel like this doesn't need that. You know what I mean? It doesn't need the help. And like I said, a little bit is definitely going a long way. So the one thing I'm definitely noticing right off the bat, I think it can look nice on your skin and make your skin look like skin, but I am gonna put some wear notes in the, in the description box because I have a strong suspicion 
that this might be one of those products that wears off kind of quickly because it is more, I don't know. It definitely has the hydration to it and you can see it big time. So I'll just be curious to see the wear time. I guess that's the whole point. So I will put that in the description box if you're curious how it looked by the end of the day, et cetera, and I'll update you on a few of the other products I am trying today. But upon initial application, it looks really nice. And I'm just now remembering I said I would use a brush and I didn't, but I, I feel like this looked really nice with the fingers. So there you go. So far, so good. And definitely kind of like a max of medium, like light medium, you know? Uh, I don't, I wouldn't, I mean, this is maybe inching onto medium, but not quite. So definitely more of a lighter coverage product. All right, this is kind of a quick retry. I repurchased in a different shade, the Dior Forever Skin Correct. So we're just quickly gonna toss this on. I got one, 0.5 in. The other one I got, I already don't remember, was it too dark or too light? <laughs> and I still don't know that this is perfect, but I just, I really, I was enjoying the formula of it. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try another shade and just see how it goes. But this is definitely more coverage than the Say product. So I'm gonna kind of bring a little bit of this there and there just to kind of, I don't know, help match the coverage level because this is like a lot of coverage in this area. I always get a lot of questions about the brushes I use, especially for concealer because I am a concealer brush lover. This is definitely one of my favorites, the Sephora Pro number 56. They sell a like shorter version of this. The brush is exactly the same, but like a shorter version that's a little bit cheaper too. And this itself is not wildly expensive. It's a brush that will last you forever. As long as you like wash it, take care of it, I mean, I've had this for years and it's just like when I bought it. So yeah, I just, I definitely feel like this, that concealer is just pretty. It's very expensive. So I'm trying to determine if I think it's worth that price tag, but I feel like it covers really well and it still looks natural. Like you can still see hydration through it. And I kind of like that, even though I typically still set it, but I want it to look like that before I set it. And I don't know why. Let me throw on my e.l.f. Brow Wow, my favorite brow product probably of all time. Also, are you enjoying my purple moment that I'm having? You guys, we might be doing purple eyeshadow today and I know what you're thinking. Who is this woman and what has she done with Jessica? I never, ever put color on my eyes. There's no reason other than I just always feel like I don't know what I'm doing, slash, whoops, slash, I don't look good in it. So we're, we're just gonna go with it and we're gonna do some purple eyeshadow just for funsies, cause I'm wearing purple it is springtime and I'm just, I'm feeling it. So we're gonna use this palette here. This is the Lawless The One Lavender Palette. This came in PR. I literally had it in my giveaway box for like neighbors, sisters, friends to go through um, slash donation box, you know? And then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? If I were to try a color, purple would be it. So I pulled it out and I'm glad I did. So we're gonna try it. So they've got, let's kind of swatch this some of the shimmers, ooh. And then what I'm really curious about, these purples here. Okay, so these, there's the shimmers, there's some of the purples. And then I love that there are some like blending shades there to help you kind of make it all work together. We're gonna try it. The real question is, do I go for this purple or this purple? I'm thinking that one, just cause it looks like fun. I'm nervous. What's funny though is I'm like, Jessica, this really is no different than you, you doing brown eyeshadow. It's just a different color. You still blend it the same, you pretty much, Apply it to the same areas, you know what I mean? <laughs> My mother-in-law Benita's here and I can't wait to go down and see her and her be like, oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna kinda try to get a little bit more of it and kinda blend it up. So now I'm gonna take this kind of like lighter shade there and just blend it up here to make it a little more cohesive, you know? So it looks more intentional. Th these kinds of purple shades are so pretty though. I've always said that pink was my favorite color, at least in recent years, but the more I think about it, the more I'm drawn to purple. I'm like, is purple becoming my favorite color? I don't know, maybe. I definitely feel like this has been easy to work with so far, and it, as someone that is intimidated by color myself, this hasn't felt super intimidating to work with. I feel like it's been pretty easy, but we'll see. I still want that purple to come through, so I'm gonna go on top one more time now that the rest of it's blended, just to bring out a little more of that. I feel like this lighting is not doing justice to how bright this actually is. I don't know. So let's kind of leave that be for now. We might have to go back in. Let's throw on some liner, and then I have a mascara that is new that I, I'm very intrigued by and I cannot wait to try. All right, so we just did like a, I did dark brown liner and just kind of like smudged and winged it out as I 
have been doing a lot lately. So the mascara we're gonna try is from MAC. And I feel like I, I couldn't even tell you the last time a new product was launched from MAC that I've been like, ooh. And it's not that I don't like a lot of MAC products, but I just feel like they're definitely not the brand that's like churning out a bunch of new stuff. I kind of respect that to be honest, but I was very, very interested in this. This is their Lash Dry Shampoo Mascara Refresher. Oh, I'm now realizing this is not a mascara in itself. So it says you apply it over dried and set mascara. The Lash Teaser Brush combs through lashes without tugging. So I need to put on a mascara and then maybe at the end of the video, I'll try to like, once the mascara is set, we'll try to use this, but just to show it to you, this is what it looks like. It's definitely a ma like a mascara, like it definitely, but I'll be very curious. It has like super spiky spikes <laughs> on the, the comb. So we'll try this towards the end once my other mascara is like on and dried. Very curious. So I'm just gonna throw on the e.l.f. Lash and Roll Mascara. I am definitely enjoying this. I might, this is kind of more of a low key. So actually as I'm putting this on, I'm realizing like I might need to put something a little more voluminous over it because just because I feel like I want some like juicy lashes with this purple look, but we'll see. This is one of those mascaras that I feel like is just really pretty for every day. Like it's just a really low key, easy mascara. Okay, just checking in about the, uh, that original skincare product we put on, on like our fine lines. I have to say, I am not having, like I literally had like a little bit of concealer that I needed to like tap in but there was not nearly as many fine lines that I had to like tap in. And so I'm like, wow, like that, it was noticeable. I had to think like, wait, what concealer did I use? And then I was like, wait a minute. Do you know what I mean? And of course it could also be the concealer, but still just saying, okay, we did it. So what next? All right, we have a couple of things to use next. First up, I have been dying to try the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Bronzer. I bought two shades and I actually, don't feel that I did buy two shades. I think they accidentally sent me. I'll need to look because I'm like, I just don't think that I did. But one is lighter, of course, and one is darker. So this one is the shade four. And I love, 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 love the Tinted Moisturizer Blush from Laura Mercier. It's just so easy to use. It's so natural looking. And so I, I was very excited when I saw they launched these. So, wow, big difference. Shade number two, shade number four. Um, let's go in with shade number two first, just to see just how it looks on my skin, considering it is so light. And then if we want a little more, maybe we'll go into number four. So number two, using my favorite Haley's Beauty uh, brush is my favorite for both foundation and cream bronzer. You can get it on Amazon, I can link it below. So yeah, this is definitely pretty close to my skin tone, which I like. I mean, I think a lot of people like whatever bronzer you can find that's like close to your skin tone, because then it doesn't look as like it's obvious, but it's not so obvious. Boy, that blended in fast. You guys see that? <laughs> All right, let's try this on this side too, because the lighting is a little different on each side of my face since I'm just dependent on God's natural lighting. Wow, that was so easy. So easy. I don't even necessarily feel like I need that number four, because this is definitely still bronzing the skin so easily. Oh my gosh. This is awesome. <laughs> I think one thing I like about it is they definitely have color to them, but they, there's something about them, they have this transparency to them as well. And so when you're blending them in, it doesn't feel like you're smearing just pigment back and forth. It has that quality where it kind of seeps into the skin as well, and it's slightly transparent too, so it just can look really nice and it's really easy and beginner friendly or just someone like me where I'm, you know, I'm not a makeup artist, I'm just, I don't know. I don't have to think so hard about it. I just wanna be able to get it on my face and it look decent. So I really liked that. I like that the tone is really close to my skin, color, but of course they have a range of shades. So you could get one if you don't like it to be, if you want yours to be more obvious, definitely go up in um, shade based on your skin tone. Anyway, so that I'm excited to use again tomorrow. That is. Awesome. So I also got this About Face Blush Balm. It's their Cheek Freak. This is one of those brands that's slightly more affordable. I mean, compared to some other like higher end brands, it's, it's kind of cute. It has an AF for About Face on there. It's definitely very balmy, very balmy. Um, it's got like a slight emollience to it, but then it's, it's almost like a cream to powder where it kind of becomes powdery once you put it on. I wanna look up how they recommend applying this because I would go in with my finger for this, 
but I wanna make sure that's kinda how they would recommend doing it. Okay, I take back what I said about affordable because these are $18. I got it when it was on sale, if I'm remembering right. So I think I was thinking of the sale price, um, $18. Like if I'm comparing that to Sephora brands, I feel like that's more affordable, more like in the rare beauty range. But I mean, when I'm comparing it to drugstore, it's kind of iffy. Anyway, so it's an ultra creamy, lightweight balm blush that glides onto the skin for a soft wash of color with amazing lasting power. So I feel like because it does kind of become almost powdery-like, that's why it stays a while. The refreshing buildable formula melts into a liquid when applied, creating a diffused translucent finish. So. It says use your fingers, swirl, pat, and then blend onto the apples of the cheeks. To diffuse the color, gently tap a short bristle brush where the product is applied. So I'm now realizing, this is not really, I have another blush I wanted to use and I'm, I just feel like this color, this color is gonna go with what's going on way more than this. So I think I might wait on that. Maybe I'll pop it into like a future video or a uh, just Instagram story trying it, but I really want to try this shade. So this is the Benefit Blush in Willa, and this is the shade I've been wanting to get my hands on for a while. It was like sold out for a hot minute. Now it's back, baby. But I got it during the Ulta sale when it was half off. I really like the shade Peach in if you're looking for like a peach shade, but this is more of like a pink. And I, ooh, okay, that, <laughs> that packed it more of a punch I think than I thought it would, but it's a little more pink and so I just feel like with the purple, the pink makes more sense than like a coral. I think it would drive me nuts. Um, anyway, all right, we're gonna kind of blend this with a sponge because it's definitely got a little more power to it. But I like the tone. I think I was hoping it would be a little lighter, but I guess looking at it here, it's, it's just not. It's more of a medium pink. So it is really pretty. I like the formula of these. I just feel like they last really well. They're typically pretty foolproof. They blend into the skin kind of nicely. I mean, it's a powder, but, um, and they always have a slight smell and I really like the smell but it's very slight anyway. So I like it. I'm gonna keep messing with it. I think it looks nice, especially for spring. Like that kind of pink is, is cute. So I have a highlighter, but I also have a powder I'm wanting to use. So this is the new launch from Makeup Forever of their HD Skin Matte Velvet. So they relaunched it. I'm assuming it's a reformulation. I love the packaging of this. I think that is so pretty. I have the OG and I have loved it for years. And so I was very curious to try this new version, if you will. I got the shade 1N06, is that right? Yeah. I have always liked this because it adds a good amount of coverage, but it's nothing. Wait a minute. I wanna look something up. Before I say anything further, give me a moan. So it's described as a lightweight, medium to full coverage powder foundation. It blurs imperfections. It mattifies for up to 24 hours for a natural, real skin finish. What I'm trying to decipher is, do they still sell the other one? And I'm assuming they don't. Because I felt like the other one, what am I doing? I have the other one. Hold on, we're gonna compare. Also, what in the world shade? I got my old one is here old, I mean, it wasn't even that long ago that I bought this. So just so you can see the comparison, they're, you know, same packaging, but different. I do, like I said, I do like the look of this. I got R220 here. Definitely looks like the new one I just got here is a little like, this one is a better shade match for me. So there's that. Anyway, the old one that is. So let me kind of feel and swatch these side by side and see if they feel the same. They definitely do. So I, and uh, it could be that they did reform it, but they feel very, very similar. They're both kind of blurring and smoothing, it looks like. They're kind of, you know, definitely fuller coverage, but still soft, like to the touch. So we're just gonna put a little bit of this on in my T-zone, because I definitely feel like I need it with that foundation. I think my skin looks healthy, but it just it just needs a little bit of mattification. So I love this this powder. I don't know that it feels very different than the old one was. It really feels awfully similar. So perhaps if you already have the old one and you're like, oh, I totally want to try the new one, I would hold off. This feels, again, it could be slightly different, but it does not feel different enough. Use up the one you have. Um, but I wouldn't be sad to buy this. Like if you were totally obsessed with your old one and you're like, oh no, this feels very, very similar. So I think you'll still be happy with it. And I, it mattified really nicely. It gives just that little bit more coverage. This is one of those products, if I'm touching up my makeup, I would just get some. And I, this is usually where I need to touch up my makeup, I feel like. So it's a really easy thing to just kind of grab and it blends everything together down there. 
because I just feel like I'm constantly like touching the bottom of my face. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so very cool. I'm glad I tried it. I think shade wise, it's close enough. I don't think I need to go like seek out this exact shade. Um, but yeah, now that I've powdered, I want to try, <laughs> try this highlighter. Uh, so this is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow. It looks like their lip balm, but it is a highlighter. Weird, huh? I guess that makes sense that they would do that because I don't know why not. It looks really, look how pretty that looks. So I'm gonna just get a little bit on my finger. It's definitely not nearly as like thick and emollient as their like lip gloss balm they have in this. So that's good. Cause I was like, oh boy. This, but it does feel easy to blend. I think it looks pretty nice. Let's do a little brow bone. Yeah, I feel like that looks nice. I wanted to kind of make fun of the packaging if I'm being honest, but it kind of works because you just get that little bit on your finger. It doesn't feel as weird to use as I think I thought it would. Do you know what I mean? So I think it looks nice. This is one of those things I want to use a little bit more before I decide because I don't know, I want to see it in different lighting as well because sometimes highlighters can really make your texture on your skin super obvious. So I want to kind of look at this a little bit more and decide, but I did like the application method. I thought it was really easy. And then I don't really have a new lippy. So I just want to put on, well, I mean, this is new, but I just tried it in my previous video, the vlog. Um, I say previous video. I don't know what order these are going up, but anyway, that one is definitely already up. So I tried this in there, but we're going to try it again. This is the NYX fat lip oil. It is so pretty. It's this kind of pinkish. Well, the shade I have is pinkish. This shade is supermodel. Smells so juicy and good, like a 90s childhood. And it just feels good. I felt like when I wore it the other day, it wore off really comfortably. Like it didn't look weird or get that line. Like a lot of, even some of my favorites will do that. This didn't do that, I think, because it is more of a lip oil and not a gloss necessarily, even though it, I mean, obviously looks glossy, but I just think it's so fun and it smells so good. So this is gonna be like, my summertime lippy, you know? My lashes are dry. So we're gonna try this dry shampoo. So what is the goal here? Is it to, okay, it says 91% said lashes looked revived and more amplified. So it re revives your lashes so you wouldn't have to remove it. And that I can totally see as I'm thinking about it because I'm definitely someone that like, if I have like worked all day and then I am about to like, have guests over or we're about to go out, I'll touch up my makeup, I think as a lot of us do, and I'll touch up my mascara no matter what. So I'm, I'm grabbing that mascara and I'm wiggling it in no matter how hard and dry it is. So to have this as kind of a tool is interesting. So let's just see, well, oh no, it's, it is actually working, I think. It's hard to tell, you know what I mean? It definitely feels like it's getting in there and it feels, oh yeah, it's working, hold on. Now all of a sudden my lashes are so soft. Like whatever was hardened, this just like melted it. What in the heck? Okay. I didn't, I'm, I did not expect this to work, you guys. This is the ultimate video of like things that were ultra like hyped and like have these interesting claims, but they're actually working. That actually worked. My lashes are now soft. And it was able, I mean, there's some mascara that just came off because it was able to reapply some of this mascara on the now softened lashes. But I got it everywhere. So <laughs> I don't know which is worse. And it is seemingly not really coming off very easily. I'm just kind of blending it. I feel like it takes a few like wiggles at the base to get it to like start softening it. And then the mascara is suddenly soft and you're able to just kind of boop, boop, boop. This is the most unique product I have ever used in my life. I've been doing this for 10 years and this is the most unique product I've ever used. And this is a problem, I'm gonna put that in quotes, but a problem I feel like I've had for as long as I can remember, but I've never really thought about that there could possibly be something that would help reapplying mascara midway through the day. And this is it, man, like I am, astounded that this actually works. <laughs> They've done it. They've done it all, you guys. All right, so let me take a moment to look back through everything we just tried um, to kind of pick a few favorites, share some final thoughts. Um, again, I'll have my wear notes in the description box. If you're curious about how some of this looked, you know, by the end of the day. Okay, let me see here. So sharing my favorite few products that already right off the bat, I'm really impressed by. I'm excited to use some more. 
uh, well, the targeted wrinkle corrector, what the heck? I really do feel like every all of that is less obvious. I really do. And this is going to be one of those things that it's kind of going to be a long road for me to figure out over the next few weeks. Is it this? Am I just in my head? So I'm going to keep messing with it. I'll, I'll keep you posted, but it, it's just so wild. <laughs> I've never tried a product like this. So very excited. I'm obviously super jazzed about the MAC Dry Shampoo Mascara. What a unique, unique product, unique formula, something that I'll actually use. And it's just something new. It's a disruptor, baby. And I'm gonna count this because it is still new to me, the NYX Fat, oh, I'm sorry, Lip Drip Oil. What in the world did I call it? Fat Lip Oil? <laughs> Jeez. Um, wow, the Lip Drip Oil, just so comfy, smells amazing, totally my new spring and summer lippy. And I really did enjoy the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Bronzer. Like looking at my skin, it definitely is not super obvious. So I'll mess with the darker shade too. I don't think this would be for everyone though. Like first of all, if you're someone that's not even into like cream and liquid bronzers, don't mess with this because I don't, I think it's easy to use, but I just don't think it's gonna be your cup of tea because it's always gonna be a little less obvious. And if you like more like powder bronzer, I just don't think this is a good foray into jumping into liquid and cream bronzer, but I really like it a lot, but it's not gonna be something I'm gonna depend on for like a 14 hour day in the summer. You know what I mean? It's, I don't think it's gonna be one of those things that lasts a long time on the skin, but I do like it for like general everyday use. And then the other things I just still feel like I wanna try out. The Say Foundation I think does look nice and healthy on the skin. I feel like this could be one of my go-tos for like, just one of those weekend days where I want my skin to look nice or even weekday, but where I'm not needing it to look perfect by the end of the day. Like I'm not needing it to last a long time. This concealer I really am enjoying and I'm really glad that I actually remembered to, I returned the other one, I got the correct shade because this formula is just a comfortable, easy to use formula. And yes, it is expensive, but I'm someone that concealer is a staple and I'm willing to spend the money if it's actually worth it and this one feels really nice. I feel like it wears really well throughout the day. So I'm excited to have the right shade. The highlighter from Tarte, I like, I'm not so sure about yet. The Makeup Forever powder, you already know I like. I like the coverage level, the mattification level. It's just lovely. And of course, I mean, this, I mean, I'm proud of myself for stepping outside of my comfort zone and doing a little bit of a purple look. I'll pop a little video here of what all of this looks like in natural light, especially so you can see like the eyeshadow too. Um, I really liked this. I think if I'm ever doing purple shadow again, which now I'm like, maybe, this would be the one I'd grab and I'm glad I ended up keeping it because these tones I think are just really pretty, especially this cooler tone purple that I grabbed. So the formula was really nice. I felt like for a purple shadow, this was like pretty darn pigmented and it's staying really nicely. I mean, I've had it on for 30 minutes, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so I feel like that was a little overwhelming, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will uh, be doing in about probably three weeks or so, another speed reviews video after I tried these and the stuff from last month. Um, a little bit longer so I can give you more of a thorough idea of now that I'd used them longer, how I feel about them. That's probably one of my most valuable videos to watch if you really are looking for certain products that you, you might be considering buying. Um, but I also hope you'll come say hey to me over on my Instagram. It is at it's Jessica Braun. I put reels up over there, which like TikToks, you know. I also pop onto my stories over there a lot, almost daily, just to chat with you guys, give you updates on stuff, whether it's makeup or life or just, you know, any old thing. But uh, thanks for watching all the way to the end. I hope you subscribe and catch more of my videos and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.